Hello, welcome back. In the last episode, we made it so that when we uh, hook things up properly, the hard points vanish. Um, there are a couple of flaws with this. One of them is that we can still have objects overlap on each other, so we're going to fix that one first. The second problem is that sometimes we'll have multiple hard points uh, uh, involved, and we'll need to actually delete all of the hard points, not just the ones that we're working with. So, um, all of those things come down to placeable object. When we make something concrete, we need to add it or delete it from that placed object list. So if we just placed it and it's not in a list, add it to the list. If it's if we've just deleted it and it's on the list, then take it out of the list. Like so. That will give us a long list of all of the placed objects, and the reason we need that is because we need to make sure that we aren't colliding with any of the ones that have already been established. So, so what we do here is we just take the bounding boxes and make sure they don't collide. I wonder whether we can get them from the game object. No. Is it the mesh filter? Is that what it is? Mesh filter. So um, we just need to see whether or not these bounds overlap. Is there an over? No. Okay. Encapsulate. Is that correct? No. Extents. Intersects. There it is. And it's that easy, except I'm not actually sure. I think that maybe the bounding boxes are agnostic to location. Uh, I, the transform may not affect them, so we may have to manually alter the bounding boxes by the transform position. But we'll go ahead and assume that this is going to work, and if it doesn't work, then we'll know that it's broken. So here in Cursor, um, we need to go ahead and uh, uh, make sure that we can place it by just going through all of those objects. a lot of placeable objects there. <laughs> Don't get confused as to what is what. Um, we've got an object called object to place that we need to be testing against. Like that. If if it collides, then debug.log collides with existing room plus So 
So that should make it so that our uh, our bounding box is. So first off, we need to um, create. Ah, see there. That's I knew what that that problem would be. The question is whether or not this problem is. Uh, I think it's because it's the transform is. So let's go ahead and just. Let's just take a look at the bounding box in question. Oh, uh, we don't check the bounding box in the very first one. Huh. Oh, because it's not connected. That's right. I'm being stupid again. All right, so here you can see how the center is at 0, 0, 0, 0. That's the problem. So we actually need to make it so that my bounds dot center equals transform dot position, and we also need to make it so that other bounds dot center equals other dot transform dot position. And I think it's probably a faster way to get that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. But that didn't work. Hmm. Oh, because we're stretched. Oh, god damn it. So this is a problem where we're actually using a stretched object as a room. And uh, this is only an issue because this is just how we... Uh, uh, I'm using the block prefab and I stretched it. We really shouldn't be stretching those meshes at all. So what we're going to actually do here is we're going to go into Blender and create ourselves a box. Please hold on. So here we are in Blender. Here's a box. Uh, as it turns out, I've got one already pre-created. It's my default startup. Um, if you need to create a box, you just add mesh cube. Make sure it's in the middle. Um, uh, or you can use prefabs that aren't quite so ugly or whatever you'd like. Uh, but we're actually going to be manually creating meshes in the script later as part of our unique castle building. So uh, we don't need to worry about it too much. We just need something to, to, to work for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and these, I'm just going to grab all of them, and I'm going to scale by y, and then I multiply by 2, um, scale by y, multiply by 2, there we go. So I think this room is going to be a lot smaller than the one we were using, but that should be okay. Oh, just for the sake of it not looking terrible, we're actually going to go ahead and hit 5 and 1 to get a front view, and then hit down, down, left, left, uh, I wanted to hit up, up, left, left, there. Uh, and then we're going to project from UV. And the whole reason we need to do this is just so that we have some kind of UV map so that we can apply a texture. Um, it's going to look awful, but we don't really care. We just want it there just for uh, emergency's sake. So then save it again and close it down. And it should pop up right here under the hall. There it is. So here in Thing We Place, we've got this mesh filter cube. Let's just go ahead and replace it like so. Doom. And then instead of scaling, we just have all of our scales be 1. Uh, now you can see that we have this problem where the mesh is oriented incorrectly. And uh, as I said before, that's part of Blender's, uh, Blender and Unity disagree uh, as to which axis is which, Y and Z. Uh, and of course Blender is right and Unity is wrong, but that doesn't really matter in this case. We need it to work. So our X90 should rotate us. It has reversed our Z and our X, and you can see now that the box is in the right alignment. But our hard points are not. Um, they are crazily located because of a, the size of the box has changed. So the, the, we changed our scaling and all of the things inside were also scaled. So we just need to put all of these hard points at the tips, like so, uh, and size them to be something vaguely more accurate, like this. And we've got this hard point here. Let's go ahead and, um, like so. There we are. 
these hard points are still kind of small. They can be scaled. There's no problem with that. It's only when the uh, the core mesh is scaled that we start to run into problems where it gets scaled everywhere. So as a rule, um, scaling meshes is uh, always going to be annoying if you later plan to do more complicated stuff with your meshes, which we do. Uh, so we're going to be... Um, I should probably make these slightly different sized just so that they don't have that annoying... Um, when they're exactly the same size, they have that annoying popping uh, where the two surfaces overlap in an annoying way. So I just change the size slightly so that they don't overlap in quite the same way. And there we go. Save it. Press play. Alright, so you can see that this is a much, much smaller room, but that's okay. As it turns out, the size of the room is okay. It can be adapted to however we would like it. Oh, if you've got a bounding box. So you can see that our extents are now correct. Um, the radi the bounding box goes one out in each direction and four forward, but we had a problem where we're rotating incorrectly. Uh, now, ideally, what we would do is we would have some kind of... Uh, we're getting the bounding box from the mesh, and I'm sure that there is some way to figure out um, how to get the bounding box from the object rather than the mesh. Uh, let me go ahead and see whether that's true. Well, the answer is to use the mesh collider rather than the mesh filter, I think. But more importantly, um, we can use the mesh collider here. Uh, we don't actually, we need to be a little bit alert and aware. I think that is the correct cube, but let's just make double sure. Um, there we go. So uh, we should actually be able to use this mesh collider as a uh, uh, as the collision detector. Um, the mesh collider is turned to a different layer, but that shouldn't interfere with two mesh colliders being detected. So mesh collider my mesh collider equals get component mesh collider. And then we say my MC dot let's go ahead and see what it's got available for us. We could get the bounds. Um, a lot of these are just the uh, standard um, uh, mono behavior stuff. All right, it doesn't look like we can get them. Um, uh, doesn't look like we can just compare the two colliders. So we need to go ahead and get the bounding boxes. Let's go ahead and see whether those bounds are correct. All right, so those bounds are, in fact, not correct either. Um, oh, I'm comparing the mesh collider to itself. Uh, I think that these I think that these bounds are actually correctly scaled and rotated and all that jazz. So if you don't want to create something in Blender that should still work out, yeah. So these are actually rotated correctly. Um, but we are running into a problem where the two of them collide. Um, and I think that's just because the bounding boxes touch at the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the extents by a tiny, tiny amount. So
because the rooms actually do touch. We, we, we're okay with that. We just don't want them to overlap. Yeah, perfect. Yay, it works great. All right, thanks for bearing with me. We shouldn't have that much pro that problem uh, again anytime in the near future. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it so far. And uh, that's it.